So this is a presentation that originally should be held by Niels Müller-Schäsel, but unfortunately he cannot be here, so I'm just standing here. And this is about another package that we have developed, and that's the package uh, Aorista, which is used to calculate uh, an heuristic sum. Uh, the thing is, I will probably motivate that later on a bit, if you don't know the heuristic sum, uh, uh, approach. Um, within the standard heuristic approach, we realize that there is a problem with, uh, which we would like to solve with our package, but the basic idea you can also use outside of the package itself. So, to the motivation, Heuristic uh, is originally, and I will not read that to you, uh, developed uh, in the crime sector, okay, in the crime fighting sector, um, to identify um, time slots within a time might have happened or areas where a time is uh, um, possibly may happen in the near future. So it's, uh, what is it, pre-cops from, uh, yeah, so it's crime prediction in a way. Um, the basic idea is you have some events that have uh, a beginning and the end, and an end, and you don't have any idea at what time the actual event took place. So you have only marking of the beginning of the end, and this could be, for example, a site occupation. You have uh, a site that has a certain uh, temporary range, probably, and you don't know when the site was actually occupied, so you take the whole range and then divide the probability that the site was there within arbitrary time slices. And uh, with that you get a probability that you can sum up from multiple sites and get then an idea about how many sites were present at a specific uh, time. And there's also uh, a use case for that in anthropological cases. For example, estimation of age distributions, there it's also used, although it's not called heuristic. Um, it's, in the end, it's a widespread intuitive tool, although probably a lot of people don't realize that they are doing these kind of analysis and do, do not formally do that. Um, explicitly, it was mentioned in 2004 uh, for ar uh, archaeological applications by two colleagues. And it's recently referenced by a lot of papers that deal with uncertainty in temporal distribution of, of sites. Um, and as I said, it's also the proportional method that is used in uh, anthropological um, investigations about burial grounds, where it's essentially the same methodology that's used there. Okay, um, actually, the whole idea relies on that we have so this time and the temporal intervals here represents an ordinal scale variable. And in the ideal world, ordinal scales should involve only discrete, non-overlapping categories. But in reality, and this is true for archaeology as well as for anthropology, these, uh, um, these categories t tend to overlap. And the problem that is uh, resulting from that is uh, where these uh, categories overlap, there is an uh, overestimation of amount by the heuristics. Let's see that in the archaeological context. So this is uh, uh, probably a very a standard um, depiction of archaeological phases. So you might see that or translate that or not, but let's say we have here uh, the early Neolithic and then some early Neolithic phases and we might zoom in a bit to have this more clear. So we have here the Neolithic, and then there's the possibility that is funnel beaker complex, early Neolithic, early Neolithic 1, early Neolithic 1a, and so on. So in all these possibilities of date something overlap each other very much, and uh, you can plot it like that, that for certain times we have six possible categories within which uh, um, an archaeological artifact could fall to date something. And let's put that into a simulation. Um, we have a um, Monte Carlo process that simulates the BC date, some BC date. And then we have, uh, let's assume we have that as the date of a site, of an activity, of a pit. And within this, this pit, let's assume we have only one 
datable artifact, but we don't know what it is. And uh, there is uh, yeah, a random possibility for the um, chronological sensitivity of this artifact. So either you could date this artifact to early Neolithic 1b or only uh, another artifact that could be there only to early Neolithic 1 and so on and so forth or just to the Neolithic. So we make here also random selection in the simulation. Uh, select one possible artifact, one date sensitivity and uh, have that as a date for the activity there and then make an heuristic uh, um, analysis over that. The thing is, um, you see here our background, or the, <coughs> the ground truth. This is our expected result from the simulation because we have a, a uniform distributed uh, possibility for the individual dates. This line here shows the number of phases that uh, are in parallel at that specific time and you can see that the result of the heuristic analysis very much reflects the number of phases that uh, could possibly be uh, dated to with our artifacts. So there's a lot of influence how many possibilities uh, you could choose from to the output of the heuristic uh, um, analysis. And if you apply these uh, approaches from Prima at all that use a Monte Carlo simulation to overcome such problems, you still see that it very much reflects the original heuristic uh, um, yeah, sum, the, the naive heuristic sum. You can find this uh, and other very nice and interesting ideas on, in the ARC series package of, uh, uh, who was it actually? So, uh, David Orton is it, right. So, in, in that package, but it doesn't solve the, this problem here. <coughs> So, how can we solve that? Uh, in the end, we just look how many parallel phases are within several time slides, divide our heuristic uh, factor by the number of parallel phases on that time, and then make uh, uh, rescale the whole thing that we have a rosum of 1, and then we can use that as a corrected heuristic factor for our, our analysis. And if we apply that to our simulation, you can see again the black line represents the result of the this time corrected hours and there are still some, un, yeah, some random effects going on there but it very much better reflects our ground truth than the uncorrected hours would have done. So this might be a step forward in this direction, might correct the thing. Here's an application for that. I use here a sum calibration of uh, all the C14 dates from Jutland and already with the uncorrected uh, iris, there's a, and this is, so these uh, are only site, typological site datings from a, a Danish database. No C14 is taking place here. Already there's quite a good fit between the two curves. But with the corrected iris, you can see that the fit is really impressive. So uh, giving me also the, uh, the evidence that uh, some calibration is a good tool to estimate archaeological number of archaeological known sites. But let's go to the anthropological context. And here, um, I will not go to, into detail very much here, but we have here uh, the burial ground of Magdalenberg. Um, and we can use a function, and this comes as uh, yeah, age classes uh, dying table, mortality table. We see later on a bit more of that with another package. Um, and you can use an uh, um, empirical function to calc come from that to something where you have this mortality table in a yearly resolution. And we can use that again for a simulation. And so you can see this is the proportion of uh, death dead people within this burial ground based on this um, yearly resolution. And if we then look how uh, anthropologists would classify these individuals uh, according to that, we turn to a real uh, world case of Münzing Rhein, where we have here the anthropological categories which, in which uh, the individuals can be class uh, classified. So either from 60 to 99, very old people, or you can also say 20 to 25 would be possible, 20 to 29, 20 to 20. Uh, 49. And this is kind of a random situation because uh, how good 
an individual can be dated is independent from uh, uh, the basic data. It's, it's a random process. And we can also use that to simulate that again. Um, here's the background code for the simulation. It is also true for uh, the first simulation. You don't have to write that down now. These slides will also be available on GitHub. Uh, but what comes out is a, um, a data frame of individuals with different uh, anthropological um, yeah, estimations of their age from the simulation. And if we apply to that the uh, proportional method or the RRIST, then we can see here um, the uh, original data, that's the uh, orange line, and the uncorrected iris. And you can see that here's some stuff going on. Here's a very strong peak. Here's a plateau. Here's an overestimation of uh, older individuals. Uh, with the corrected uh, proportional method from our uh, approach, it fits much better to the original data. And you can see this effect also if we apply the corrected and uncorrected risk to the burial ground of Munzing line. Um, so this actually might, uh, it actually makes a difference if you use the corrected or the uncorrected proportional method. Um, so in the end, we think heuristic analysis is, is still a valuable tool, although there are some problems with that that currently hasn't been addressed yet, but we might have at least partly addressed some of the problems with it. Um, the Monte Carlo approaches, uh, a la uh, Enrico Crema et al. and other people that follow the same path, doesn't solve this problem, unfortunately. Um, but you can use our R package uh, that you can find here at GitHub to come up with a corrected heuristic uh, analysis. Um, yeah, originally Niels is the driving engine behind this package, but the development took place within the whole ISA group, so uh, the package itself has a lot of authors, and you can find the code of this presentation at the GitHub page, and I'm pretty done with the presentation. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Looking forward to your questions.